Hey, welcome to another Rottler Tech Tip. I'm Ryan, back here on the EM105 again today. And today I wanna to show you guys a cool concept that's got to do with setting up tools and how to manage a tool library. This will be applicable to any Rottler machines. And what we're looking into is uh, storing length compensations, as we would call it, for the tools that we'll be using uh, inside the Rottler software. So to start out, why would you want to use length compensation and why would you want to set up a tool library? Well, normally on a, any of our Rottler machines, we'll be using our probes and we'll probably have something like a fly cutter, a boring bar like we have here today. And when we go and we set up these programs, you go in and you set the zeros and you tell it where you want to go and you might touch off and run it across the block if you're doing a fly cut application. Well, we would have to go and touch all these tools to every surface that we want to machine on every block we'd want to do. Uh, so we can kind of speed up that process with a little bit more setup work and, and that's where a tool library comes into. Because what we want to do is we want to use the probe and set that up as what I like to call our reference tool and then, and then we're going to tell it the difference basically from where the probe would be touching a surface and, and the inserts of one of our tools is touching that surface. And once the machine stores that height difference, uh, then we only ever have to use the probe to touch any surface we want to machine on any block. Uh, and that's going to save you time when you go to write a program then. You can have these tools and as long as they're set up properly, put any block in here, touch it with the probe, tape measure for your bore spacing, tape measure for your bore length, just get a rough approximation and type that right into the program so you can write a program and you know, set up and write a, write a program to do any block in you know, 10 minutes. Um, so let's hop right in. So the first thing I need to do is I just want to come over, I've got a block here. You could do this on any flat surface. And I'm inside our Rattler block software. I'm gonna jog the probe just so I'm over the edge of the block. Then I'm gonna do a probe auto center command and we're gonna do a depth probe. So the probe is just gonna come in and touch this surface and it'll stop on it. I'll select depth in here. I'm gonna use the mouse. So I'm here in our software and from the main, I've, I've already, I'm inside of a program, you can do this in any program. I came down to probe auto center probe commands popped up and I'm going to use the depth operation. When I hit go on this, this probe is going to come in and touch the surface right here. I'll hit go. Probe's turned on. Okay. Now, what I want to do back over here on the control, set zeros page, standard, any block software, any program you open and create is going to have this in it. Uh, our X, Y, and Z here, these are our zero locations. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double tap Z and that's gonna zero it out. So I've zeroed it out with the probe in there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this back up. Just need to set a Z zero for now. I'm gonna take the probe out of the machine I'm going to put my fly cutter in. Get it in the right way. Okay, so now I've got my fly cutter loaded up into the spindle. It's got its insert in it. I'm just using one insert today. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go back into the control and I need to create this tool. This is our 16 inch fly cutter, so I'll call it the 16 inch fly cutter. So I'm gonna back out. I've already set zero from within here. And I want you to pay attention. This is your DRO here. This is also a DRO up here, these numbers. So you should see uh, that these match what we're seeing down here. And that's important because we need to pay attention to that. When I back out of this program by hitting program select, this DRO is still registering the zeros from that program. Now for my home screen, I'm going here to table of tools. Click it. These are all the tools that I've created in this. And over here on the right, we can add tool, remove tool, set an active. Uh, and you'll see right here, this one that's active and labeled, it is my probe. So I've already created a probe tool. 
and I used it while I was probing. This tab right here is length compensation. Those are the recorded values for the length differences from the probe uh, for all my tools. So I wanna go and create a, a new tool here. So I'll add a tool and I'll open, open up this form. Now this form, there's a lot of information in here, but what I, what's really important to me or to anyone creating this is we wanna give it a name so we know what it is. Underneath the name, there's a diameter. You can give it the diameter if you want. Uh, for end mills and stuff, if you're interpolating, that's important. So it's always a good idea to put it in there. And then the rest of it's really just for simulation stuff. So down here where it says get length compensation, that's the other one that's important. Name, diameter, length compensation. That's what you need to remember. So I'm gonna pull this back. I'll do this real quick. So I'm gonna type in a 16 inch fly cutter and I'm gonna say it's a 16 inch diameter. And then we're gonna do the length compensation in just a second. 16 inch fly cutter. I will tell it that it's a 16 inch diameter tool. Okay, and I'm just gonna click okay for now because I wanna move this around. So I'll just hit okay, the tool's created. Okay. And it put it down here, tool 21. It put it in at the end of the list. I want to select that tool, so I tap it. And then back on the right where it says set active tool, I wanna to click that button. Set active is gonna make the fly cutter option pink, just like how the probe is now. And what that pink note and, and set active means is it assumes that it's, the, uh, it's telling the machine, this is the tool that's in the spindle. I'll hit set active. Okay. And it'll tell you to change out the tool with a set active. There's another operation that says set active without moving to tool change position. Since I had already just manually loaded this, you can use the set active without moving to tool change. Um, if you just click set active, it'll pop up a thing saying, please insert the tool. If it's already inserted, you just press okay. I have that tool active and I need to go back. And what I wanna do is I've touched the probe to the surface and set zero. What I wanna do is I wanna bring this tool in with its insert so that it's touching the same surface that the probe was. Uh, and then I want to go and do that length compensation operation. And that is basically going to say, okay, now the machine will know the difference in heights between the probe and this fly cutter. So I need to go back into the program that I set my zeros in. So I go into it, to jog over. So the manual will bring it down. Now. And to get over that same surface again. A couple different philosophies for uh, setting up and touching off tools. Uh, you could bring this down just so you have the, the, the cutter head just kind of touching and you can scratch the insert. You can turn the spindle on, click it down with the hand wheel till it just leaves a witness mark. Consider that a touch off. You can do a paper touch off. I really like to use uh, one thou brass shim strip. That can take a little bit of deflection and I can just slide this under the insert until it's just dragging. Technically, you'll be a thou above where you were touching. You could take that back out if you wanted. Being a thou off may or may not matter to you depending on what you're trying to achieve and what the tool is supposed to be doing. So, I'm gonna stick this in here. I'm gonna use the one thousandths increment on the hand wheel. I'm just gonna come down until this is dragging. Just like doing a paper touch off. I got that so it's just touching under it. Now if you wanted, like I said, if you want to get the most accurate, you could come up one. So you can slide that out and then go down two. Okay, that kind of compensates for that one thou. A lot of times when I'm just going, just do this and we'll call that zero. Okay. So with that setting in place, what we want to do now is we want to open up that tool holder form again. So I'll back out of the program, go back to program select, back into table of tools. Got to open up. Open up the 16 inch fly cutter tool we just created. And I'm going to hit get length compensation down here. Click get length compensation. It's going to bring up a separate little box here. And I want to zoom in as close as I can here. So your two options are Z location from zero and Z touch off height. We'll never change Z location from zero. We wanna play with the Z touch off height. And what I need to do to make this process work 
is I'm gonna first off move this out of the way. I need to be able to see this ZDRO, this value that we had. Remember I said earlier you want to pay attention to that. So move this out of the way so you can see the Z value. Hit get length compensation. And the first thing you do is for that Z touch off height, you're going to make that zero. Okay. I usually do it twice just to be sure. And now you'll see up here, the Z height has changed. It was at three something, now it's at 2.9113. So what I do is, what we have this saying now is that what the machine thinks is that with this touching, where the probe touched, which is zero, it thinks it's at two inches, uh, 2.9 inches. We need that to say zero. So go back into length comp, go to your Z touch off height, and you need to put that number in, but you're gonna flip the signs. So it's positive, we're gonna make it negative. So negative 2.9. Nine one one three. When I hit enter, you're gonna see that change to zero. Okay, so now, now the machine knows when I've got this tool in here and it's touching the surface, the same surface that that probe touched, that that's gonna be at zero. And that's how you store that length compensation. So if you don't see zero here after you're doing that when you're touching, that's how you know you got you gotta do something else. Go back through those steps. If I click OK, you'll see down here now we have a length value for the 16 inch fly cutter. It says negative 3.0577. So it's saying it's about uh, three inches shorter than that it has to compensate from what from when the probe touches. Okay. I'm done with that, I go back into my program. Same inside my program. Uh, the, the program that we were working in originally, it now says zero with this touching. Everything looks good. Or I come back up and see. So that's, that's now stored that. Um, now, again, and the reason why you would do this is now with this set, with this insert touching, and if I index the insert, the insert usually will repeat sub 1000. If I swapped to another insert, I'd probably go, redo and, uh, go back and redo that. Um, again, it really depends on how precise you wanna be each time. But uh, you can do that process with all your tools. And now what that lets me do is, if I put a different block in here, uh, I'm just gonna touch it with the probe. I'll just bring the probe down. The probe touches the surface. I load the tool and I tell it, I wanna take 5,000. So I'll take negative 5,000 off for my fly cut operation. And it'll just, as soon as I put this tool in, it'll go down, go to negative five now, and it's gonna run it. I don't have to come in and touch the, the fly cutter off every deck surface that I wanna do. I just load the probe, let it touch the surface. And the same thing can be done uh, with your boring bars. You can do the same operation. Uh, probe a surface, bring the boring bars to the insert, just touches the, the deck surface, do that operation, and now you've got your boring bars set. So again, like I said earlier, you could go in, tape measure to the bottom of your bore. If it's negative seven inches, you're just gonna type in negative seven for your programs now. Right, and that would always be from within here. So let's say I have a mill cycle. We'll hop into our mill cycle here. And in your operation, you're gonna have your depths, right? And so you can see how mine are and they're set. Vertical starts at negative three, that's because I was going under zero on this. Uh, but again, it would always be on an original setup, you'd be at zero. And you can now just type in negative five. Um, you can copy highest and lowest from the probe, but I don't have to change this from when I probe and I can use the probe to assist me and make it very easy in production settings. That's kind of the, uh, the, the crash course on setting up a tool, setting up length compensation. If you have more questions about that, um, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email is ryan, R-Y-A-N, at rottlermfg.com. Uh, anytime if you're looking for some help or any some assistance and would like to know more about setting up various tools, happy to help. So hope this is insightful. Hope this uh, gets you guys a little more information, gets you thinking about what you can do on a rottler and uh, how you can manage your tools and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you.